Matthew chapter 27, 46 verse, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I want to talk to you today on this subject from this verse, questions from the cross. Questions from the cross. We look at our texts and we see that there were several different questions asked. Some asked before, some asked while the three were on the cross and they were talking about Jesus saying if he be Christ or if he be the son of God, then let him come down from the cross. And then some said, well, if he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross. And the thieves said the same thing, from the cross. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Save yourself and us too. But the question that Jesus asked was, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? <clears throat> Questions from the cross. And as I was saying a while ago, that a lot of times we look at life and we think that sometimes that God is not with us. And the first thing we ask is, God, where are you? Or we'll ask like Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? In my time of trouble, in my time of need, it seems like God has abandoned me. I need help. My children ain't acting right. My spouse ain't acting right. My bills just can't seem to get in order. The job is acting like they want to lay me off or the, the boss is not treating me right and they're talking about me on the job. It seems like I just can't find no help. Lord, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? But before we get into why Jesus may have asked this question, why Jesus even said this question, even getting to all of this, let's deal with what the thieves did. Luke 23, verse 39 tells us, and one of the male factors which hang railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. So, Look at what he says. One of the male factors, it didn't say both of them, it said one of them. In the same predicament that Jesus is in. Saying, save thyself and us. Verse 4 says, but the other answering rebuke saying, dost not thou feel God, seeing that thou art the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say, uh, verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. But the first one, the, the one that doesn't say whether it was the one on the left or the one on the right. It just said one of the male factors that was crucified, one of the thieves, one of the, 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 the um, sinners, one of the men that were crucified with Jesus, asked him, saying, if you are who you say you are, save yourself and us. Why is it that a question that question from the cross was more seemed to be more about that man getting down than him really wanting Jesus to save himself. Did he really believe that he was Jesus? Did he really believe that he was the Son of God? No. He was bitter. He was angry. 
And a lot of times what happens when people are bitter and angry, they are bitter and angry more or less with themselves in the predicament that they got themselves in, but yet they want you to come because you are the child of God to help deliver them out of the situation. So they'll come to you and say, if you are the child of God, if you belong to who you say you belong to, help me get out of this situation. They tell you, you can help others, why can't you help me? But sometimes, the situations that people get themselves in, they need to get themselves out of. We cannot, as children of God, we cannot, as sons of God, daughters of God, help everybody out of their situation. Sometimes, as, as, as like the old folks used to say, you made your bed, you got a lie in it. See, we as people get in trouble and get in situations, but yet we don't want to deal with the consequences of our actions. We don't want to deal with the consequences of our decisions. All we want to do is get help out of it. And a lot of times what happens is when you get help out of your situation, you end up right back in the situation because you didn't learn nothing from the first time you was in it. How do I know that? Because there are people that were both broke, busted, and disgusted and played the lottery and won millions of dollars. And inside of five years, they were back broke, busted, and disgusted because they didn't learn nothing from the previous situation they were in. You have parents who have kids who, who go off and get in trouble, and the minute they get arrested, they go bail them out of jail, and, and, and the next thing you know, they're in jail again for something worse because they didn't learn anything from the first time they got arrested. Or they didn't learn anything from the first time. Mama said, you shouldn't do that. I heard parents say, you know, I put my child, but it just don't seem to be enough. Well, you know, if you're whooping your child and you're whooping him on the bottom and you and, and, and it doesn't seem to be enough. Maybe it's the fact that you didn't do it often enough. Or long enough. Or hard enough. Because if you do it right. And you do it the Bible says. If you spare it or it's for the child. So therefore you should not spare it. You should do what God. And take the rod. And, and chastise that child. Where he's supposed to chastise. And he won't run over you. Oh you could do it once. And think one time is enough. That ain't going to do nothing. Because he'll soon forget. About that one time. And he'll be questioning you. Like this one was, is questioning Jesus. They'll think, he'll say. Well mom. Daddy you so big and bad. You know come get me out of jail. Come get me out of this trouble at school. They'll come tell you everything. That's been done to them. But they'll never tell you what they did to cause the reaction that they got. Right. We have to learn that we cannot just have questions without understanding the consequences of our actions. If we understand the consequences to our actions, our question will not be if thou art Christ. Our question will be that I believe you are Christ. And as the next male factor said, remember me. See, one asks, if you are Christ, save thyself and us. See, what he's saying is, if, you, if you're Jesus, if you, if you are the Son of God, if you save yourself and us, I believe you are the Son of God. In other words, he said, I've got to have a sign. I've, I've got to have a miracle. You've got to do something for me in order for me to believe who you are. But the other one said, to the same one that cast that out. But the 
other one answered, rebuking him. He rebuked him. Told him, stop it. That's enough. Talking about this man. He said, this man has done nothing wrong. He said, you should be in a situation right now where you are fearing God because you're at the point of death and you still have no fear of God. It amazes me how many people have no fear of God. They feel like they can do what they want, live how they want, go where they, go where they want to go, see what they want to see, say what they want to say with no consequences because they have no fear of God. He said, Does, he said do not thou fear God, seeing that seeing thou art in the same condemnation. He is in the same condemnation as we are and we are thieves. We are sinners. We have done major wrong but this man has done nothing wrong. Amen. And you don't even feel God. You want to talk about it. You want to ask him if he is who he said he is. The problem the thief had was he couldn't see God being put on a cross. The problem he had was he didn't pay attention in school. When they was teaching the history lesson and talking about the Christ having to come and die for our sins, he didn't pay attention in Sunday school. When he was having Bible lessons and they were talking about the, the, the uh, uh, prophecies about Christ coming and, and dying and washing away the sins of the world. Or could it be that it, that it wasn't that he didn't pay attention, but he was so busy doing his own thing that he didn't go to church. He didn't go to the synagogue. He didn't go to the temple. He didn't hear what the priest had to say. He didn't want to hear what the prophet was saying as they were coming along. I mean... Seems to me like all of Jerusalem knew about the prophecy of Jesus. I mean, it had been passed down from generation to generation and everybody was talking about that the Messiah is coming. But he felt like he didn't have to worry about that. I don't have to listen to that. I can do what I want to do. And we got that same spirit today. People that come to church one Sunday out of a month and feel like they've done their due. Or they'll come to church when they need something. When they need you to pray for them or when they need a handout or, or, or when they, you know, things are just not going right, then they want to show up and think that because they showed up that one time that God is going to just get down and help them with all of their problems. It doesn't work that way. You've got to stand up for God even when it doesn't look like it's, it's worthwhile for you to stand up for him if you want his help. Look at what the other one said. What he says. Ask him. He rebuked him and said, Does thou not feel God's sin without the same condemnation? He was standing up for Jesus. He was in the same condemnation of Jesus. He was nailed to a cross just like Jesus, but yet he stood up. He let his mouth be vocal in boldness for God and rebuked the man that spoke against him. And look what happened. He didn't say, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God, so you know, when you get down, I know you'll, you'll bring me down because I already believe. Well, you know, he didn't say all that. He said, Look, I believe in that you are Jesus, the Son of the living God. He said, you know what? He said, all I ask you to do is just remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, what is that saying? He didn't ask to get down. He didn't ask to be saved. He didn't ask to be sanctified. He didn't ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All he asked is that when you go into your kingdom, just remember me. What he was saying was, 
Remember what I just did. Remember that I rebuked it. I rebuked that guy that talked about you. Remember that I, I told him he should be he should be thanking or, or he should be worshiping. I remember that I told him that he should be fearing God. In other words, he told Jesus, just let me be a memory in your kingdom. I ain't got to get there. Just, just talk about me every now and then because I'll be a member. That's all I want. Because I stood up for you. Because I deserve what I'm getting. I deserve it because I've done wrong. We, we, we got people that do wrong and don't think they deserve the punishment. And that's from church leaders all the way down to the ones that don't go to church. I remember a show, a television show called Beretta. He used to say, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. <laughs> we got people that don't want to do the time, but steady doing the crime. Mm -hmm. And the question the guy asked was, Lord, remember me. One said, if you are, the son of God, the other one said, Lord, I know who you are. Just remember me. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, not next week, not when the rapture come, but today you're going to be with me in paradise. When we are in trouble, that's when we want Jesus to save us and help us. But we need to be able to go to Jesus when we ain't in trouble. We need to be able to go and call on his name when things are going right. We need to go and call, talk to Jesus when the bank account is full or when the bills are paid and we don't need extra money or when we don't need extra help. We still need to be able to go and talk to Jesus and go and ask him and say, Lord, you know, I don't need no help today, but what can I do for you? Amen. Right. We don't need to be asking him questions about helping us. We need to be asking him questions about what? Can I do for you? Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, this is another day. So what is it that you want me to do? I'm here to work for the kingdom of God. What is it that you would have me to do? See, when we start thinking like that, when we start thinking that I want to ask God what is it that he wants me to do, I don't have to worry about my problems because he'll take care of my problems as I take care of the things that he has for me to do. We don't need to feel God because we're going through the same condemnation of the world. Just because the world is in, right now they tell you, they say the world is in a, a, a what, a, oppression. But we don't need to feel God just because of that. Just because the world is not going the way that, and things are not happening in the world the way that we think they are. We don't need to feel God. We need to trust God. We need to believe in God. We need to accept God and know that because the wisdom may be failing, that God's system never fails. to learn to trust God. The Bible tells us that God did not give us a spirit of fear. But the spirit of love and a power and of a sound mind. If you got a sound mind and you got it from God, you don't have to fear what the world is doing and what your neighbors are doing. And if they're running around in fear, you don't have to do that because you know that you trust God. And you have no fear. Other than fear and admiration of God. Mm -hmm. But as they took Jesus. And everybody starts talking about him. Everybody is railing against him. And everybody is saying that if you are this, why don't you come down? Or why don't you bring yourself down? And after all of that, and after being, being having on the cross and having a crown of thorns in your head and then put nails in his hands and been pierced in his side and, and nails in his feet and he's hanging from a cross. And after being tied to a whipping post and took on the stripes of a nine cat tail whip that has beat him almost unrecognizable, then he comes to the point at the ninth hour said he'd been on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour 
hung there for three hours after all of that. He's hung, hung there for three hours and he, he cries out. At that moment, he cries out. Because we have to remember, not only is Jesus man, but he is God. And he takes upon himself the sins of the world. How will my sins transferred to him? How will my sins put upon him? No. No. My sins was not transferred to him. Your sins was not transferred to him. But see, the thing is, when you get somebody that'll pay the price for sin, period, because the wages of sin is death, but you get somebody that will pay, God knew that if I go down in the form of a man and if I pay the price for sin, not that they're going to transfer their sins upon me, but if I pay the price for sin, what God did was not transfer my sins and transfer your sins upon him, but he took all of sin and placed it on his son. Not transferred from me to him, but he took sin that was in the world and it was placed upon him. No transference. It wasn't transferred. It was placed upon him. And it was when it was placed upon him, he paid the price for sin. At that moment when all of sin was placed upon Jesus, and in the agony of all that he was going through and all that his body had been going through and all that his body had endured, the God in him separated from the stench of the man that was carrying the sin. And he cried out. And see, every time Jesus spoke, we always attribute to it as if it was God speaking. But when he cried out, he cried out as a man. Not as God. He cried out and said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabbatan. He cried out because it was already prophesied, it was already stated in the book of Psalms that he would cry out. That he would ask this question. Psalms 22, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was already written that he was going to, the man was going to speak out. That the Messiah would speak out. <clears throat> why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my Lord? Just like us. In times of trouble, we cry out. And in times when things are not going our way, just like I was this week, and not wanting to come to church, not wanting to be at Bible study, not wanting to be here on Sunday morning, crying out, God, help me. God, where are you? I need you. God hadn't forsaken me, God had left me. But because of the things that I was going through, I couldn't feel the presence and I couldn't see the presence of God, but he, it was there the whole time. So the man cried out, Ela, Ela, Lama Sabbathani, my God, my God, why is thou the sea? Verse 2 in Psalms 22 says, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest me not. And in the night season, and I'm not silent, but thou art holy, 
O thou who are who inhabited the praises of Israel. He said, I cry in the daytime, and thou hearest me not. What he was saying was the fact that I'm crying, but it seemed like I'm not getting a response from him. But then he goes on to say, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. When it doesn't seem like God is going to respond, does not mean that he's not responding. He may not be responding in the way that you see. But if we look at our text and we see that God began to respond even before he cried out. Because the Bible says that about the ninth hour it began to get dark. God was responding then. He was beginning to show people that this is my son. Because he took the sun and he hid it. And the moon veiled in blood. And it had a centurion that looked up and said, Surely, surely, this is the Son of God. Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because it was the man in him who thought that God may have turned away from him, but yet it was the man that had separated from the God in him because of the stench of sin. But God had forsaken him. God was preparing. Sometimes when you feel like God is abandoning you, he's not abandoning you, but he's preparing you. Amen. I'm so glad you was able to join us today. And I know this was a wonderful message and it really has spoken to you. And you might would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and save me. You can save me and you might want to do it today. There's no need to put it off. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and save you, do it right now. You can do it by repeating after me. Heavenly Father, I come right now before you, submitting myself unto you. And I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins and all my un unrighteousness. And Father, I thank you for allowing him to die on the cross and pay the price of sin that I don't have to. For I realize that the wages of sin is death. And Father, you let Jesus take the price and pay the price for me. And by the shedding of his blood, he washed away all my sins. Father, you, I believe that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that I shall be saved. And Father, I thank you right now and I believe it that I am saved. I am redeemed. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for his blood that has cleansed me from all unrighteousness and made me saved. And today I submit myself to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. If you have said that prayer with me, then you are saved right now. You've accepted Jesus Christ into your life. He's coming to your life right now. Right now, He's coming to your life. Lord, I thank you for accepting them. I thank you for going into their lives. I thank you for blessing them. I thank you for filling them with hope and filling them with righteousness and filling them with joy, the joy of the Lord. Touch them right now with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that you've blessed them and you've saved them and you've sanctified them and set them free. And Father, I come before you right now and I give you praise and ask that you would anoint them and fill them and baptize them in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may I want to support this ministry. You may want to give a donation. And you can also give at what's on the screen. And then you can give to us. Or you can send your love gifts or whatnot. Or if you just want to give a testimony, you can also write us and give us a testimony of what the Lord has done in your life. We would love to hear your testimony of what the Lord has done in your life. And, and uh, just from, from what the, you hear from here, just from, from the word that you hear. From what you're getting from here, from us, we would love to hear how God has blessed you, how God has anointed you, how God has opened up Himself to you, or how you have received from Him. Any blessings that you receive, any uh, miracles that has happened, and, and sit down and write us a letter and let us know how God has changed your life. And we thank you for watching. 
Come and watch us again next time on Voice of Life Worship Center, Voice of Life Ministries. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.